In this Lies of P build guide, I'm going to be covering the Sawblade Slicer build, which is a build that boasts huge range with a good attack speed while maintaining the massive damage that you can get from Greed Swords. The weapon used for this build is a combination of the Bone Cutting Sawblade and Bramble Curved Sword Handle, which is basically a combination of a heavy blade with a balanced sword handle that are both available by Area 5, which is about 8 hours or so into the game. The Sawblade Slicer build focuses on dealing steady stagger damage by charging a heavy attack from far away and leaping towards the enemy to deal full stagger damage without the risk of getting hit during the charge up. Naturally, the charge attack itself does big damage and can be effectively used against normal enemies, and the Bone Cutting Sawblade's normal attack has a wide range that will kill normal enemies within your level in 2-3 hits. The main source of damage for this build will come from the Fable Art, which the build gets its name from Furious Slash. This Fable Art will rapidly slash and slice all enemies in an AoE in front of you 8 times, then deal a strong finishing blow that deals extra damage and stagger. This attack has massive potential damage, but it can be easily interrupted, leaving you with less Fable and not much damage dealt to the enemy. Thus, this Lies of P build focuses on staggering the enemy, and then instead of using a Fatal Attack, using this Fable Art to its maximum potential. The easiest class to start this build with is the Path of the Cricket Balance, as this is a balanced build. However, if you want to use the quick and agile technique weapons or the strong and heavy motivity weapons in the early game before you get this weapon, feel free to do so as you can put a technique or motivity crank on the handle to skew it in favor of whatever you are building. You get very slight inconsequential extra damage by sticking to one stat and using a crank rather than going balanced. Please keep in mind that you cannot respec the starting class stats, even though you can respec in this game, so if you want to min-max this build, make sure to stick with your decision. The Booster Glaive is similar to the Sawblade in that it is a large greatsword, albeit with less range. Using this and combining it with the Puppet Saber Handle will make a similar, though weaker, weapon. If you didn't choose the Balanced class at the beginning of the game, I suggest using the handle you got from your starter class instead of the Puppet Saber Handle. The Booster Glaive can be found in Area 3 by heading to the Workshop Unit Entrance Stargazer and taking an immediate left and going down the ladder towards the Puppet of the Future and then going to the opposite end where there will be a chest with a Booster Glaive blade and Booster Glaive handle. You can get the Bone Cutting Saw Blade and handle from Area 5 of the game in the Malum District. From this Stargazer, go to the staircase leading to an alleyway. Follow the natural path until you reach a plaza with a bonfire in the center with a Black Rabbit Brotherhood logo. Go straight down the path to the right and climb the ladder to reach the rooftops. From the ladder, take the left path towards the chest which contains the saw blade. You can also get the Bramble Curved Sword Handle in the same area in the Malum District. However, if you have not defeated the area boss before this, you must go to the Path of the Pilgrim Stargazer first in order to acquire the Smiling Bunny Mark. From behind the Path of the Pilgrim Stargazer, there will be a few graves and a statue that will have this key item. Go there and investigate the second grave to acquire the Smiling Bunny Mark. After you acquire this item, go to the Malum District Waypoint and enter the Red Lobster. You will need the shortcut unlock to do this. From the doorway, you will see an easy-to-miss ladder on your right, which will lead to a merchant. The merchant will only sell items to you if you have the mark or defeated the boss in this area. Once you can buy items from him, you'll be able to purchase the Bramble Curve Sword Handle for 2,000 Ergo. As with all weapons, the handle determines the scaling of the weapon. In this case, the handle is that of a sword, so it will be balanced with Scaling Techniques C and Motivity C. This means that it is best to level both Motivity and Technique simultaneously, unless you chose to put a handle crank to make it a motivity weapon or technique weapon. For other stats, you want high vitality to stay healthy even when you're punished for mistiming attacks, a decent amount of vigor and capacity, and the rest spent on offensive stats of your choice. Put no points into advance as it cannot work with this build. As for the order in which you level, invest into vitality for the first 10 levels as the extra HP makes the game much more forgiving and you will make mistakes while you learn the game. Then for the next 10 levels or so, you should focus on increasing weapon damage, which will either be motivity or technique, or both. For the 10 levels after that, level vigor to get extra stamina that is necessary for this stamina-hungry build. By this part of the game, you will start getting puppet parts that start to really weigh you down, so start pumping capacity to increase the amount of weight you can hold in order to keep P under 80% load in his weight stat. This is important because your normal roll becomes much slower when you pass the 80% threshold, so if you want to equip those heavy puppet parts to be tanky, level capacity as necessary throughout your playthrough when you can't use the heaviest puppet parts. From this point onward, you should level all the default abilities equally, trying to get to the following endgame stat attributions as your goal. For amulets, I'll go over the basic amulets first that don't require rare ergo to purchase, and then get into the recommended rare ergo amulets. 
In the first amulet slot, I recommend switching between the three extra damage to enemy type amulets. These would be the Carcass Butcher's Amulet, the Murderer Puppet's Amulet, and the Puppet Destroyer's Amulet. Switch the amulet based on the type of boss or enemy you are predominantly fighting in your area for a very noticeable extra damage buff. In the second amulet slot, a boost to your primary stat is good, so either the Strength Amulet for the Motivity build, Technique Amulet for the Technique build, or the Red Fox's Amulet for a balanced build. In the third amulet slot, the Patience Amulet is very nice, increasing stamina recovery speed. This allows you to engage the enemy more often as you'll spend less time waiting for your stamina to recharge, which is especially noticeable with this stamina-hungry weapon. Alternatively, later on in the game, I swapped this amulet out with a Blue Guardianship Amulet. In the last amulet slot, the Iron Wall Amulet increases your tankiness by increasing physical resistance, thus making your life easier should you make mistakes. Alternatively, the Life Amulet is also okay at increasing the survivability of this build. Now, the special amulets that work best with this build are the Arm of God Amulet, Awakened God's Amulet, and the Extreme Modification Amulet. Arm of God will increase weapon damage after landing any successful hit, which pairs fantastically with the Rapidly Slashing Furious Slash. The Awakened Gods Amulet is quite late into the game, but also increases damage a lot by improving the damage of Fable Arts while an enemy is staggered. The whole strategy of this build is to stagger and use Furious Slash, so this pairs perfectly. Lastly, the Extreme Modification Amulet will increase your damage based on how many Fable slots you have charged. This is useful as you won't really be using your Furious Slash until you stagger, so you can put that unused Fable charge to use with this amulet. Keep in mind that if you equip the heaviest puppet parts in the game, you'll need to use the carrier's amulet which increases weight in order to use any of the special amulets without moving into the heavy status, which will make your rolls very slow. Next we'll take a look at the P-Organ upgrades you'll want for this build, and the best P-Organ synergy effects for this build are as follows. Increase Pulse Cells, which increases survivability and sustain against bosses and areas. Link Dodge, be able to dodge further away from wide AoE attacks. Add amulet slots. Equip more powerful amulets which can increase damage, improve survivability, and provide special effects. Enhance pulse cell recovery. This increases survivability and sustain against bosses and areas. Increase staggerable window. This increases the stagger time to pull off the furious slash combo against bosses who have a very short stagger time. And finally, add fable slots. This allows you to use furious slash more often. For individual effects that you get from spending one corpse, you want the following from attack type any of the synergy effects, enhanced charge stagger attack, and enhanced fable arts attack. From survival type you want any of the synergy effects, lower damage while dodging, and perfect guard guard regain recovery. For ability type you want any of the synergy effects, lower charge attack stamina consumption, perfect guard fable charge enhance, reduce stamina consumption from dash, charge fable when reviving, auto charge legion, and special grindstone weapon durability recovery. And for item type you want any of the synergy effects, and charge fable upon pull cell use. You'll have extra quartz even after getting all of these, but I don't feel as if any of the other synergy effects will be as impactful. As such, I suggest getting the synergy effects that best fit your playstyle, such as whether you choose consumables on your belt a lot or rely on your wish stone, in which case, you would get the corresponding P-Organ upgrades. I personally went for the upgrade special grindstone uses. Moving on to Legion Arms. Legion Arms that I found work best with this build are the Max Upgraded Puppet String to get a free charged attack and stagger, and Falcon Eyes to get damage while you back off and regenerate stamina. Other Legion Arms can work, so don't feel limited to use these options and experiment with what you enjoy most. And when it comes to puppet parts for this build, I always use the highest weight puppet part I found, which made me extremely tanky by the end of the game. I kept my equipment weight down using the carrier's amulet when needed and by leveling capacity, allowing me to equip these heavy parts without passing the weight threshold of 80%. Final tips. The special grindstone felt amazing to use in this build, dealing great damage when I used the flame grindstone to add fire damage to my attacks. Later on, when you can get the destruction grindstone, it really helps against bosses by speeding up the staggered damage you deal. Whenever I was in a tough spot against a mini boss, the special grindstone always helped me out a lot. Sometimes there will actually be opportunities for you to use Furious Slash without having to stagger the boss first. It's hard to notice these moments and they are a gamble, but when you do succeed, you usually stagger the boss with the stagger damage from the final attack of the combo, meaning you get a free fatal attack on top of the damage already inflicted from Furious Slash. Try to pay attention for these openings and use Furious Slash when you can. And lastly, if you use Spectres, I recommend prioritizing Wish Stones that extend its life rather than damage so that you have more opportunities to use Furious Slash and charge attack stagger the boss while it targets the Spectre instead of you. 
So that wraps up our saw blade slicer build. I hope you guys got something out of this and it puts you in a direction for a very, very strong build in this game. We will have more builds for Liza P, so stay tuned for those. And if you would like some beginner guides or you want to know what we think about the game, make sure to check out our review and beginner guides on the channel as well.